Hi, welcome to Hindman Sips with a Specialist. I'm Ben Fisher, Senior Specialist of European Furniture and Decorative Arts in Chicago, and Director and Senior Specialist of American Furniture, Folk, and Decorative Arts in our office in Cincinnati, formerly known as Cowan's Auctions. Today, I'm going to be discussing with you a highlight from our recent American Furniture, Folk, and Decorative Arts auction held on March 9th and 10th. But first, cheers. The image that you see is a late 19th century apothecary sign in the form of a mortar and pestle. It has beaded and colored glass mounts that surround its metal exterior. It comes from the collection of the late Paul Bentley of Oostburg, Wisconsin. Paul, along with his wife Judith, commissioned Margaret McCurry of Chicago-based architecture firm Tiggerman & McCurry to construct a one-of-a-kind home that would feature his vibrant folk art collection. The home became known as the Crayola House due to, in large part, its colorful exterior. Here, we see an image of the apothecary sign that Judith had shared with me. It shows the light in the kitchen where it sat within the collection, and it is accompanied by a lovely morning sunrise. And you can see how the colors of the sunrise and the colors of the light interact with one another. While this light has been fitted for modern electrical elements, it was originally fitted as a gas-powered light. And we know this not just because of the physical characteristics that the light displays, but also because of old advertisements that were made at the time of its manufacture. In researching this piece, I was lucky enough to come across an old trade card dating to the 1880s. It features a light from the manufacturing company called Travis, McClue, and Ferry of New York. They were the likely manufacturers of this apothecary sign, and they were located at 140 Green Street in Soho in Lower Manhattan. In their own words, they were manufacturers of artistic gas fixtures and sole manufacturers of patent, crystal, prismatic, and illuminated signs. And at the bottom of the back of the card, they warn of possible imitators. They are also quite pleased of themselves with their work as they go on to praise themselves. This brilliant device in style, finish, and cost is the most perfect of the many designs we have manufactured during years of experience in this line. The original cost of the light was $30 for the regular gas burner, or $32 for the English patent duplex burner, equivalent, equivalent to $775 or $825 in today's dollar. This example exhibits bands of white, amber, blue, and ruby-colored glass, with a total of 195 glass beads that were individually attached by hand and reinforced with twisted wire on the inside of the metal frame. One of the things that I love most about this light is that when it is illuminated, it casts such lovely colors on the adjacent walls and on surrounding objects. I do wish, however, that I would have had the opportunity to have seen this light lit by a flickering flame. I could only imagine how much more charming it would have been to see those colors dancing along the walls and the floors as you walked by it on the street. The apothecary light was offered with an auction estimate of $1,500 to $2,500, and it drew in a number of bidders as soon as the sale was posted. Over 20 bidders fought over this incredibly rare form, and it pushed the final hammer price to $6,500, a really great result for a wonderful example of early lighted apothecary signs. If you know of one of these rare signs within a friend's collection or within a shop nearby, please reach out to me to discuss it. I'm always eager to learn about new things and to see wonderful things that we haven't seen before. Thank you again for joining me for this week's edition of Heinemann's Sips with a Specialist. And be sure to tune in again in two weeks for the next edition of the program. Cheers.